Do you know how to plot shear force and bending moment diagram for simply supported beam with a uniformly distributed load and a point load? In this tutorial, I will teach you how to draw these diagrams in four easy steps. A beam is a horizontal member which takes vertical loads. These loads include load from slab in the form of distributed load and a point load from another beam. Stick around till the end of the tutorial to learn fully how to draw these diagrams. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London university. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. In this video, I'm going to cover one example where you have a uniformly distributed load and a point load on a simply supported beam. This kind of configuration is not very common in construction industry. Most of the time you will have a uniformly distributed load which comes from slab in real beams. Or you will have two or three point loads which means that a beam is resting on another beam. But this is purely for academic purposes for civil structural and mechanical engineering undergraduate students. This is the example which I want to solve today. It is a simply supported beam support. A is a pin support support. B is a roller support and a uniformly distributed load is spread on this portion of the beam, which is two meters. It is 15 kN per meter and a point load of five kN is applied over here. This problem has four parts. Part A is calculate reactions at support A and B. Part B is calculate shear force and bending moment and plot its diagrams. Part C is determine position and magnitude of maximum bending moment. Here the load is not spread on the entire length. It is spread on a certain portion of the beam, which means that it will have some kind of maximum uh, bending moment and we have to find out its location. Part D is if a point load 5 kN x at 60 degrees relative to the longitudinal axis of the beam, would there be any change in the reactions calculated at point A above provide a brief explanation for your answer. Part A is reactions at A and B. For this beam, first thing we want to do is that we want to work out the total load for this uniformly distributed load, which is 15 kN per meter. So 15 times 2, 2 is the length on which it is spread and it comes out to be 30 kN. And the reactions will be two reactions at support A, which is a pin support, and one reaction at support B, which is a roller support. And we have to find out these reactions. For finding reactions, I will use equilibrium equations. And there are three equilibrium equations in two dimensional space summation of horizontal forces equal to zero summation of vertical forces equal to zero and summation of moments equal to zero now the question is that how much five kilonewton looks like how much does it weigh it is about weight of adult horse which is 500 kgs and how much is 15 kilonewton per meter it is on average a weight of ford focus car which is 1.5 tons or 15 kilonewton and it is spread on two meters. These are two reactions which I want to solve. Horizontal reaction is going to be zero and you will see it in a minute. The sign convention is that vertical forces are positive upwards, horizontal forces are positive rightwards and clockwise moments are positive. Firstly, I will say summation of horizontal forces equal to zero. As only one horizontal reaction is acting here, there aren't any horizontal forces. That's the reason horizontal force is going to be zero or horizontal reaction is going to be zero. And then I will say summation of vertical forces equal to zero. There are two vertical reactions VA and VB which are acting upwards means they will be positive. And there are two loads acting five kN downwards and the total load due to UDL which is 30 kN. If you sum them up, you get VA plus VB. And then if you bring these values on the other side, you will get VA plus VB is equal to 35 kN. And for finding beam reactions, I will say summation of moment at A equal to zero and summation of moment at B is equal to zero. Let's first of all say summation of moment at A is equal to zero. These two forces VA and 
HA, they will not create any moment because there is no perpendicular distance. Moment is equal to force times perpendicular distance. As I'm finding moment at A, there is no perpendicular distance. It is zero. So that's the reason zero is multiplied with VA and HA. And then I have this five kilonewton. The distance between five kilonewton and A is one meter. So that's why it is five times one and it is creating clockwise moment with respect to A. That's the reason it is positive. And then I have 30 times 3. 30 is the total load due to UDL and it is acting at 3 meters to the support. And then you have this VB which is creating anti-clockwise moment with respect to A. And the distance between B and A is 5 meters. So that's the reason I have negative over here. If you sum these values up, you will get value of VB as 19 kilonewton. And then I will say summation of moment at B is equal to zero. When you say summation of moment at B is equal to zero, then you will have first of all VA times five. Five is the distance between A and B. That's the reason you have VA times five. It is creating a clockwise moment. So that's why it is positive. HA is not creating any moment with respect to B because it is acting in the same line. Moment is equal to force times perpendicular distance. There is no perpendicular distance here. And then you have five times four. Five is this point load. And this point load is four meters away from point B. That's the reason four is multiplied. It is creating anti-clockwise moment. And that's the reason you are seeing negative sign here. And again, 30 kilonewton, which is due to UDL, it is two meters away from B. And that's the reason you have two over here. Negative sign indicates that it is anti-clockwise. And VB, because it's the same point, so that's the reason uh, you have multiplied zero over here. So VA from here will be 16. Now I have got these two values, but how do I know that these values are right or wrong? For this, I will have to verify these results. How do we verify these results? We will simply say summation of vertical forces equal to zero. If the forces are coming out to be zero, then I will say, yes, the reactions are fine. So VA minus five, minus 30, five and 30, these are vertical downward loads and VA and VB, these are reactions. VA was 16 and VB was 19. If you sum them up, you will get zero. It means that the reactions that we found, they are all right. So the answer is HA is equal to zero, VA is equal to 16, and VB is equal to 19. Finally, we got these reactions. Remember that reactions are very important. We have to find out reactions before we plot shear force and bending moment diagram because we will need these forces. Let's move to the second part, which is shear force and bending moment calculations. So first I will work out a shear force and I will start from left at point A, which is point zero. Now at left, only vertical upward force is acting. As it is upwards, that's the reason it is positive. And between A and C, you have got no other force acting. So that's why it will remain the same. It is just before application of point load. At point load, you will subtract five kilonewton from 16. As a result, you will get 11. And then between C and D, nothing is happening. There is no other load applied. That's the reason you will only see 11 over here. And then at point E, you will multiply 15 times one, and that is a downward force. So 11 take away 15, it will give you minus four. And then at point F, you will again take away 15 times one, 15. From minus four, you will get minus 19. And between F and B, there is no force acting. So that's the reason it will be minus 19. And at support B, you will add this reaction and finally you will get zero. Let's work out moments now. Once we have got shear force and moment, then we can easily plot them. The distance from support, this is point A. At point A, you have zero bending moment. The reason is that it is a pin support. Pin support and roller support will always have zero bending moment. At point C, you will start from the left side and you will have this reaction 16 times the distance, which is one. It is clockwise, so that's the reason it is positive. At point D, you will have 16 times two, 
which is clockwise, take away 5 times 1, that is anti-clockwise, so that's why you have negative over here. And at point E, you will have 16 times 3 and 5 times 2. And total load due to this UDL, that will be 15 times 1, and that will be acting at half of this distance. So that's why you have 0.5. In that way, you get 30.5 at E. At F, you will have 16 times 4 and then 5 times this distance, which is 3, and 15 times 2. 15 is the load times 2, and it is acting at half of 2. Half of 2 is 1, so that's the reason 1 is multiplied over here. In that way, you get 19. And at support B, you have moment equal to zero because it is a roller support. Let us now plot shear force diagram. These are the values for the shear force. Let us plot the first value. So the first value is positive. That will be upwards and then between A and C, no change is in loading is happening. So that's why it remains stable at C. We have a point load, it will turn it immediately downwards. And then between C and D, we have got no other load applied, so it will remain flat. Between D and E, it is minus four, so it will come down over here. At F, it will again go down to minus 19, and then minus 19, and finally it will be zero. And then you can hatch this shear force diagram to make it look really beautiful. The key thing to note here is that the point where shear force is zero, the bending moment is going to be maximum. And you can see here that this point where shear force is zero, it is not at the center of UDL. It is somewhere in between zero and one. And in next slide, you will see that we have to find out this point in order to find out the maximum bending moment. Now we have to plot the bending moment diagram. And first, we will have a look at the values for bending moment. We have zero at point A and we have 16 at point C. We have 27 at point D. We have 30.5 at point E. And at F, we have 19. And at the end at B, we have zero. Now we have to find out the position and magnitude of maximum bending moment. Now for finding maximum bending moment, we have to locate the point where shear force is zero. Wherever shear force is zero, the bending moment is going to be maximum. So it is this point. We will blow up this point over here and we will say that it is at a distance of X from left. If it is at a distance of x, then the distance on the right will be 2 minus x. And then we will use the similar triangles to work out this value. Horizontal on left side divided by vertical on left side is equal to horizontal on right side, which is 2 minus x, divided by vertical on right side, which is 19. Remember that I have not taken here negative 19. The reason is that I'm comparing two triangles. The triangles can't be positive or negative. It's just the way it works in the shear force diagram that some values are positive and some values are negative. But here you are comparing two triangles. And from here, by cross multiplying, if you multiply these values by cross multiplying, if you multiply these values here, you will get 19x minus 11 into 2 minus x. And if you bring this 11 inside, you will get 22 minus 11x. And from here, 30x, you will get x is equal to 22 over 30, which will be equal to this value is 0.73 meters, which makes sense. It should be less than one, isn't it? So let's move on. Once we have got this value, then we will take a section at that point and we will find out moment at x. And that will be our maximum bending moment. So let's see how we can find this out. So 16 times this distance, this distance is 2.3. Five times the distance from here to X is 1.73. The negative indicates 
anti-clockwise moment and then 15 times 0 0.73 15 times the length on which it is spread times half of the length the uniformly distributed load will always be acting at half of the distance on which it is spread which is 0.73 over 2 if we simplify it we get this value 31.03 you can see that this value is higher than 30.5 slightly higher than that it's not going to make huge difference but from a structural analysis perspective we have to be correct so here it is 31.05 and then you can hatch the bending moment diagram to make it look really beautiful so this is the bending moment diagram now i'm only left with part d which says that if a point load of 5 kN acts at 60 degree will there be any change in reaction let us see if there is any change in reactions certainly yes vertical reactions at a and b will change and horizontal reaction will have a non-zero value the reason is that now the inclined force will have some components and this inclined force which you see over here it needs to be resolved into horizontal and vertical components it will have a horizontal component it will have a vertical component so it needs to be divided into two components and as a result the horizontal reaction is going to change and equally vertical reaction is going to change as well so the answer is yes it will have effect on reactions the value of reactions will change some load is going to be distributed to the horizontal reaction as well earlier we didn't have any horizontal reaction at all because there wasn't any horizontal load applied to the structure now once you have finished this problem then as a homework you can solve this problem we have a three meter beam a simply supported beam where two clonewton load is applied and a udl this time is applied at the end portion of the span which is 10 clonewton per meter find out the maximum bending moment and shear force and find out the maximum the position of maximum bending moment as well to calculate support reactions in the same way calculate the shear force and bending moment and plot these diagrams and determine the position and magnitude of the maximum bending moment and if point load 2 kN acts at 30 degree angle here what will be change in reactions certainly there will be change in reactions you have to find out what reactions will be thanks for watching this lecture today and i will see you in my next lecture these are some references which are used for preparing this lecture